Hi, my name's Jason Kennedy and I'm here for the ear.net to tell you about the new name Classic Components. We have the name NSC222, which is a preamplifier, streamer and DAC. The NAP250 power amplifier. And finally, the NPX300 power supply. This range is pretty radical for name. It replaces their core so-called classic range, which was launched in 2002, so over 20 years ago, and celebrates the company's 50th anniversary. So it's, um, it's a bit special in many respects, not least because the box is no longer square and sort of flat faced as has been the case for the sort of literally the last 50 years with um, the sort of core products from name it's got a sort of design that reflects the name statement series in as much as it's got a, sort of a central area that's lower and not metal and two wings in in brushed aluminium it looks pretty good in my opinion um, better than the last range that's for sure the um, NSC triple two is a pretty ambitious product the price is 5,700 pounds in fact the price for all three boxes they all cost 5,700 pounds each so this is a over 17,000 pound system it all in but it is also probably the most well featured um, streaming preamplifier that name have ever made and incorporates elements from the mighty name statement system at over 100 grand the volume control for instance um, it's not a potentiometer, as is the case with all but the statement preamplifier. It's an uh, optical encoder, which means it controls a resistor ladder within the preamplifier via relays, um, which gives you much more accurate volume control with none of the compromises inherent in uh, volume pots, which use more resistors to reduce the volume and therefore tend to sound better at higher levels. It's got a lot of inputs. It uh, can accept digital via optical or coaxial routes. It can take line in analog and you can use it with a, an MM cartridge on a turntable. The 222 is unusual in having uh, balanced or XLR outputs actually they look like balanced outputs but in fact it's a new system that they have introduced well, new for name at least which is pseudo balanced or balanced impedance they call it this gives you they, they supply cables specifically for this which is good um, which look function and look like XLRs in the normal sense but they're avoid metal wherever possible which is generally a good idea for sound quality and in the case of the 222 the output isn't balanced it's uh, pseudo balance which means you get the benefits the noise cancelling benefits of balanced connections without the issues around timing that can arise with, with balanced circuits that aren't well matched a balanced system requires precisely match senders and receivers in the preamplifier and the power amplifier if timing's not to be undermined. The 222 comes with a self-lighting, self it lights when you move it basically, volume uh, remote control, but it can also be controlled with the name, uh, Focaler name now app, which uh, is a lot easier, but it's really nice to have something like this to control volume and you know pause and play and what have you it's a lot more uh, handy than an app which is always going to switch yourself off just before you need it in my experience you can stream um, from 
all the usual sort of high-end streaming sources like Tidal and Cobas. You could also use Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect uh, where you control what's being played from the Spotify or Tidal app. Um, it's got Bluetooth, Chromecast and AirPlay so it's pretty well ready for any wireless system you want to use with it. The NAP250 power amplifier um, differs from its predecessor which was called NAP250DR by virtue of having a higher power output, it's 100 watts per channel whereas the 250DR was only 80 watts per channel. It's achieved this mainly by giving it increased cooling capabilities. Um, this is achieved with a sort of tunnel of sorts within the amplifier that's got a small fan at the back. So under duress, when it's being played at a high volume for a long time, the fan is a seven stage fan, so it can come in at whatever's required, you know, whatever speed is required to cool it down and stop it um, cutting out, which uh, was a problem for those who wanted to play at high levels for long times with the previous NAP250. The NPX300 power supply has two umbilicals that uh, connect it to the preamplifier and you no longer need a power cable going into the preamp when it's been used. Its primary aim is to provide cleaner, quieter mains to the preamplifier, which is always a good thing with any amplifier. They're all, they all run on electricity and the quality and the cleanness of that electricity is key to how, well, how good they sound. I started out listening to the NAP250 with a, a non-name uh, preamp and streamer and was immediately struck by its phenomenal musicality. Its sense of timing is extraordinarily on the money. Uh, this has always been a name strong point, but the last NAP250 and its predecessor to an extent didn't have this degree of, of engagement, shall we say. It sounded more like another amplifier. It's, at, it's almost as if Name were trying to sort of blend in with other products in the sort of high-end world by making their products a bit more a bit more similar sounding I suppose, a bit more sort of smooth, detailed, better imaged. But I think with this NAP250 they've kind of gone back to their roots. They've literally got their mojo back and realised that what people by name for is that incredible sense of pace, rhythm and timing and you can't blame them for it really because this is what they do well, really well. It's powerful and it's quiet though, it's worth mentioning that this isn't just an old style name amplifier in a new box, it's super quiet, um, it does have the same regulation as the DR within it is essentially the same circuit as the DR, um, but has more power. Combining the 250 with the 222 and the MPX300 really brings things up quite significantly. I mean, I was using a really decent preamp and streamer before, but using the 222, the 300 and the 250 together raises things up considerably. This is quite, an extraordinarily compelling uh, amplifier to use with any decent pair of loudspeakers and obviously a decent source but um, even using Tidal or preferably Cobas which tends to sound a bit better it's quite hard to put down quite hard to press stop and you know go to bed it's not all about groove though I mean the groove is fundamental but Detail is very strong. Uh, separation between musicians, instruments, voices is also very strong. So you do get good layering and decent depth of image and plenty of the sort of refinements that we've 
come to expect of electronics at this price, I don't think it could survive if it only did pace, rhythm and timing. It has to do dynamics, it has to do imaging, it has to do all the things that uh, yeah, modern electronics can achieve as well as that. And I think it succeeds. The one telling example was when I played an Ornette Coleman album through it, the, uh, the Shape of Jazz to Come on vinyl has to be said, but that can be quite a difficult album I find. It's got trumpet and sax and while it's not totally free it's, it's not exactly restrained either. And on many systems it can sound quite jangly and hard and the musical message doesn't come through. Here you get the opposite. The tonal aspect of it doesn't seem to be an issue because there's no blurring, there's no... It keeps everything sort of in time and in its place. The musicians are clearly playing together and the groove is phenomenal. These electronics sorted it out, sort of presented it in such a coherent fashion that the sort of energy of the brass didn't get in the way of the music or the system wasn't overpowered by the energy of the brass, that's perhaps another way of putting it, but the coherence is cru crucial with music like this and this is something that this system does phenomenally well. I think I can happily say that Name is back on track with this new classic series. Not only does it have a huge feature range and takes virtually every type of input you would want to throw at it, but it has that name, musicality and enthusiasm and engagement that the brand has always been famous for and yet more recently, in the recent past, has not been as obvious as it is here. You combine that with the fact you've got phenomenal build quality, exceptional finishing, and the sort of reliability that this company's been renowned for for most of its 50 years. And this makes it a very good case for uh, at least listening, if not investing in Name New Classic. Thank you.